I'm spending money like I just got paid. Hundred dollar bills, tell them keep the change. Come on. Bottle about to make it rain. Let me give you something now to celebrate. Come on. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering why I move the way I do. What is going on, guys? You might notice that this uh, image quality looks a lot crispier, a little bit better. It's mainly because it's much better camera. Also, we're gonna throw the light on right now. And my question for this week is, does the hair look better up or does it look better down? I apologize in advance that that shot was not in slow motion. What's going on, guys? If you're new to the channel, my name is Chris Howe. I'm a videographer, cinematographer, and creative business owner. And on this channel, we talk about everything gear-related and creative business. And today, we're combining those two things, boom, to get, ow, that kind of hurt. Combine those two things together. We're talking about how certain pieces of gear can actually elevate your creative business. Now, to give you a little bit of a background, I own a creative agency. We do video production work for companies like Corona, Toyota, and Mercedes-Benz. And today, we're talking about my favorite piece of gear that I own, the one that I pretty much use on every single shoot. That is gimbals, and we're gonna be covering some specific gimbal moves to elevate your video. Now, a few years ago, I purchased my first gimbal, and this was a huge game changer for our business. Literally, our videos went from being like clients being like, this sucks, this is horrible, I would never pay you again, this is garbage, go away or never that dramatic, to actually hiring us over and over again. So this is the one piece of gear that really elevated our shots and our production quality to the next level. So I actually purchased a brand new gimbal today. Uh, can you pass? Yep, I have it. I have it right here. So we're gonna be doing an unboxing of this bad boy right here. And thanks to my good friend, Peter McKinnon, we actually went uh, knife shopping a few weeks ago. So, oh no, I can't. I'm getting slightly better at it. I actually have a good unboxing knife. If you do that to people, it, usually it freaks them out, but when we're doing an unboxing, it's like, it's legit. So let's jump into this little unboxing of this gimbal and I'll explain why I purchased it right now. Woo! So the gimbal I've been mainly using is four years old now and it's obviously time to upgrade as the technology is just way better now. The design is better, there's better motors. Max payload is 4.5 kg. So pretty much it supports all DSLRs on the market, including my Sony A9 with a 24 to 70 G Master lens. It's a heavy setup, so this bad boy can handle it. It's got wireless image transmission so we can frame shots better and just use an iPhone or your smartphone. Controls are built right into the gimbal so you can change the f-stop or the shutter speed which just means you can get your shots quicker but mainly I wanted the dual zoom and focus control system so I've got two motors on the gimbal for more interesting and advanced gimbal moves. Boom! So let's jump in to those gimbal moves. All right my first shot up for grabs. I don't, it's not up for grabs. Well you can use it. Everyone pretty much uses it. That shot is the orbital or rotation shot. I pretty much use this move on every single shoot that we're on. I probably overuse it. That's like a whole thing for like another video, so we'll jump into that afterwards. But basically how to do it is, rotate around the subject. You can do a full 360 move or a more subtle 60 to 90 degree movement. Pro tip, the longer the lens or higher millimeter of glass that you have on it, the more dramatic the movement in the background is. This is called the parallax effect, so I would highly recommend that you guys have something in the background that's not just like a white wall, something that can show that there's actually a movement happening behind. So find a great spot outside, find an area where there's like a lot of poles or something like that, and then basically when you do your movement on a long lens, it looks super dramatic and more expensive. Cool, the next movement is a push in or pull out shot. Essentially what this is doing is that it's bringing attention to the subject. Now a little pro tip, this is a bit of an advanced move, but essentially when you're doing a pull out shot, sometimes walking backwards is smoother than walking forward. I don't know why, so don't quote me on it, but me and my friends have noticed this. So one of the things that we sometimes do is we'll do a pull out shot, we'll bring that into Premiere, and then we'll reverse that clip so that there's a smoother shot pushing in. Just make sure that it's not a shot that if it's somebody walking in and then it's reversed and the client's gonna be like, why is the shot reversed? But then you're gonna be like, oh, it's all steady now. And they're like, I don't understand why you're focusing on the steady part, the guy's going in reverse. So just don't. Just make sure there's not a weird thing that's going in reverse in your shot. Yeah. If you guys wanna make your shots more interesting, bring your camera lower to the ground. As the lens is closer to the ground, you get more movement going across the frame. Additionally, as you push through doorways or natural framings, your shots will look more cinematic. So get creative with those shots. And to bring the next level of advancement to that shot, essentially do a push in from a low angle and then press the little joystick up as your camera moves up to pan up at the subject. So you're basically combining all those movements together. You're doing a push in and getting low as well as pushing up at the subject and then and just look, it just looks badass, looks super dope. So try all those things out, but obviously work your way up. 
All right, the next shot is a follow shot. Yes, it's the most obvious shot. I feel like when you buy a gimbal, you're like the first shot you wanna do is like, I'm gonna follow somebody from behind. Yes, it's a standard shot, it looks really good, but change it up, you can follow different subjects. Let's say you have a hand running across the edge of a window frame, or you wanna follow from the side or from the front. So basically, just try different combinations of follow shots. You don't always have to follow somebody from behind or from the front. All right, one of the next movements is a roll or Dutch angle shot. Now guys, be careful with this. Yes, it's a super cool effect. You know, your camera can do a full 360 as you move forward, but it has to be purposeful and for the right client. Not all your clients are gonna be club directors and club promoters and you can do like full rotations and like, yeah, more rotations. It could be a corporate shot and a Dutch angle just doesn't, doesn't work for that. So be purposeful for it. This is one of the main reasons I did pick up the Crane 3 is because it has that new technology. My old gimbals did not have that and I want some versatility in my gimbal, but be purposeful with this shot because it can be overused. All right, the next movement is a crane or jib movement. All you guys need to use is your arms and your legs to create movements up and down. You guys don't need a jib anymore because you guys are the jib. Additionally, Zayun also makes a trans mount telescopic monopod so you guys can attach it to that and then raise the monopod up or raise the monopod down. So that just takes your shot to the next level. Secret pro tip to make your gimbal even more versatile is to add the zoom motor to it. Now, if you guys can't afford the zoom motor, also you can take your clip, shoot it in 4K, bring that into Premiere Pro and then have a digital zoom on the clip. It just makes your shots more interesting. So yeah, that's my little, little pro tip for you. All right guys, so here's an overall tip for you. I know we talked about specific camera movements, but if you guys just wanna like get more creative with your shots, just add a bit of movement to them. So whether you have a gimbal or not, generally what makes shots look more cinematic or expensive is when there's a bit of movement even if it's subtle. So next time you guys are watching a movie, pay attention to the shots. Most cases, there's gonna be a bit of movement. So different ways to make that movement more obvious is put different things in the foreground. So have something a bit closer to the lens or bring your camera lower to the ground or bring something closer to the wall. Specifically, let's talk about the wall for a second. The main reason why I picked up the Crane 3 is that when I would hold a gimbal like this and go through a door, I'd always like, hit my elbows. I didn't want to do that anymore. I want to protect these elbows. They look good in the future. Also, it makes the shots more interesting and cinematic. I can get closer to the wall. I can walk through frames a little bit easier. And with the top down handle, I can get lower to the ground. So generally, because of the design of this gimbal, my shots are going to look more cinematic. If you guys are interested in hearing more about the Crane 3, you guys can check out the links below. Yes, I do have an affiliate link. So if you do pick it up, I get a little bit of a kickback for it, but I just genuinely love this gimbal. And that's why I picked it up to incorporate it into our workflow moving forward. Essentially take all those tips, all those movements and start incorporating that into your business and I guarantee you're gonna start getting more opportunities and more requests for work. We saw it ourselves in our business the moment we actually got a gimbal and started implementing these shots, we got more requests for business. So it actually benefited us investing in this type of gear. So it worked for us. It's probably my favorite piece of gear that we own in terms of our video production company. I would highly recommend it for you guys too. So on that note guys, that is it. That's how we do it. My name is Chris Howe. If you guys are interested in hearing more about gear reviews or creative business, you guys can subscribe by hitting the link below. Also hit the bell to be notified for future videos. Press the like button, all that other stuff that YouTubers tell you to do. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, everybody. Bye. <laughs>